I want to quickly talk to you about how to remove hard inquiries with a credit score or credit report for that matter. And uh, so here's the overview I want you to pay attention to. So when we talk about removing hard inquiries from your credit, it's important to understand what a hard inquiry on your credit report is. A lot of folks think they understand the difference between soft and uh, hard inquiry, but in reality, they have no idea. So basically, a hard inquiry is recorded when someone requests to review your credit report as a part of a credit application process. Pretty straightforward, right? So when you hear the terms hard credit check or hard pull, those are basically, uh, those mean the same thing. And so this kind of request come from an authorized lender. And uh, so a lender, this can be a credit card provider, this can be a, a loan provider, this can be a mortgage provider. And uh, so those uh, authorized uh, hard inquiries can actually, actually shave up uh, up to five or 10 points of your credit score. Okay, that's really important now. While hard inquiries staying on your file for two years, there are lingering effects on your credit score lasts for one year. So that's kind of important, one year versus two years. And you can find those checks on your credit report in the section called hard inquiries. And sometimes it's called hard pulls, okay? So how is a hard inquiry different from a soft inquiry? Well, soft inquiries are made when you pull yourself. So when you pull your own credit report, or let's say you receive a pre-approved offer from a lender. So basically when you have a soft inquiries, they do not impact your, your credit score negatively because uh, those are initiated either by yourself or with, from a, a lender with, with whom you already have a relationship. So it's really best to avoid too many hard inquiries uh, in a short period because prospective lenders may really interpret, they may interpret this as a sign of uh, making irresponsible credit applications or let's say uh, even worse, your inability to pay them back. So it's one of those things where you have to uh, keep uh, expectations pretty high vis-a-vis -vis lenders, uh, all kinds of lenders for that matter. And uh, so what to know if you are comparison shopping, it's really uh, important to understand that if you are rate shopping for various types of credit accounts, the best credit card, the best personal finance option, the best auto loan and what have you, you might trigger a flurry of hard checks and credit score and models can, however, group similar credit checks and allow you to comparison shop for the best interest rates. So it's one of those things you have to be a little strategic in terms of timing, okay? And uh, so that's really good. So the rate shopping window varies from model to model. For FICO, you have 14 days to 45 days, depending on the FICO scoring formula used. For Vantage score, 14 day span. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Dig a little deeper when it comes to removing hard inquiries from your credit report. Here is the approach I want you to really uh, think about. Now, there are a couple of reasons why there are hard inquiries in your credit report, and uh, those are pretty uh, straightforward. So you have checks from an authorized lender. Authorized lender means what? You apply for a credit card, you apply for a loan. So those are authorized. In other words, you authorize them to check your credit report. That's number one. Number two, you have reporting errors. So sometimes the three major credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and uh, TransUnion, what happens here is that they actually make, uh, let's say, mistaken entries on your file. And uh, th I mean, nobody's perfect, right? They're all, we are all humans. And those organizations, they make mistakes too. So common types of uh, credit reporting errors will include identity mismatches or mixed files. You have account errors balance and data management errors and let me break let me break it down a little for you so when we talk about identity mismatches or mixed files this could be uh, mistakes with your person with uh, your personally identifiable information like an incorrect name address or phone number jumbled account information that was confused with somebody someone else who has the same name or a similar name to yours let's say your name is john doe and somebody else is called also john doe and you have uh, you can have the same debt listed multiple times with different names or you can have incorrect account information as a result of identity theft and you can also have account errors so incorrect dates so opening date last payment date or date of first delinquency inaccurate reports or of late payments or delinquencies authorized users reported as the account owner closed account marked as open or vice versa so that's really uh, a possibility there 
You can also have balance and data management errors. So this can be incorrect current balance or credit limits, reinsertion of incorrect information after uh, even after a rectification, and you can have multiple instances of the same accounts listed with different creditors. So those are things you really have to uh, be aware of. The third possibility of having issues is a potential identity theft. So if you stumble upon an unfamiliar inquiry, it might be an honest mistake by a lender. However, it could also indicate fraud. So you always want to contact the data furnisher if you are in a doubt. Okay, this is really important. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about how to remove hard inquiries from your credit report. And now I'm showing you the steps you need to follow to remove actually uh, hard inquiries from your credit report. Now, so how, the first thing you want to do is you want to obtain free copies of your credit report. I mean, you can't really dispute unauthorized inquiries on a report that you don't have, right? And the report that you really need to obtain should be updated. So you can order free credit reports once a year from each bureau. And the cool thing is that, you know, the, the three bureaus often record the same information, but sometimes it, there are differences. So, it, and this could be uh, the data furniture or this could be timing and so on and so forth. So you always want to check all three reports carefully for sign of identity theft. So when you actually check all three reports, what you do is you are basically looking for consistency, but you're also looking for your ability to verify things across the board. So you want to really, uh, you can go to annualcreditreport.com so you can order your free credit report and uh, you can also, uh, you know, order a credit report separately from Experian, from Equifax and TransUnion so you can actually compare and contrast. You can do a side-by-side -side comparison to see if uh, they have the same info. That way you are sure that you are on the right path. So the first thing is you want to obtain free copies of your credit report. The second thing is you want to flag in any uh, inaccuracy that you have, especially when it comes to hard inquiries. You don't want to flag inaccuracies when it comes to soft pulls because nobody really cares, okay? You want to really look at the, those hard pulls. And so you want to check, when you get the, the reports, you want to check the hard inquiries section of uh, each reports. You also want to make sure you recognize all credit checks as legitimate hard inquiries and you 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 have to know the details of any unrecognized credit inquiries the reason one of you want to focus on uh, the hard pool is because those are the pools that actually uh, impact on your credit score the soft pool have no impact The third thing is if you want to remove hard inquiries from your credit report, you have to contact the original lenders, right? So you obtain free copies of your of your credit report, flag any inaccuracies in terms of uh, hard pulls, and, and if there is a if there is anything that you want to chew on, then you need to contact the original lender. And you may be able to avoid a formal dispute over a hard inquiry by making direct direct contact with the furniture. And this can be a credit card issuer, this can be a car dealership, it can be a lender. It can be a mortgage uh, mortgage provider and so on and so forth. And so you want to contact the creditor responsible for the hard inquiry. And you can find their contact details on their official website or a social media page. And so what you want to do, you got to be a little strategic though. You want to explain that you believe there is an error on your credit report and you have to request that they remove the inquiry. Remember, the law is on your side. Okay, you have all kinds of uh, credit credit. Uh, Consumer credit laws, they're all allowing you to really, uh, you know, preserve in a court of uh, law. Like if there is a, if there is an, an, an illegal proceeding, you will preserve, you will really uh, prevail. Okay. And uh, what you want to do is you want to share accurate details about the incorrect hard inquiry, such as the date of the credit check. And number four, you have to start an official dispute. Remember, remember, your goal is to remove hard inquiries from your credit report. So if you are trying to be nice and nobody is really trying to really take you seriously, you got you got to really uh, put ramp up the pressure. So you know, so sometimes your efforts to resolve the matter yourself may not succeed. So if the data furnisher doesn't know how to remove inquiries from credit report, or ignores, or even worse, rejects your request, you want to file a formal dispute. Okay, use the law. The law is there to kind of help you out. The law is there for 
situations like this and uh, you want to really use the you want to exercise the full effect of the law so you want to decide if you will file your uh, dispute online or with a written letter in any case you want to always remember to keep a copy if you send a dispute letter by mail it's always a great idea in case you have to pursue legal action later avoid filing disputes over the phone while that's a quick way to report issues or get advice from authorities it's very difficult to maintain a, a paper trail and in this case you gotta maintain a paper trail boss i want to quickly remind you of today's topic we are having a conversation about how to remove hard inquiries from your credit report Next thing you want to do is you want to include all essential information. So when we talk about removing hard inquiries from uh, cr your credit report, remember that granularity plays an important role. I mean, you want to be as detailed as possible because uh, if you were to go in the court of law, details will, will really help you out. Not only you, you need to have uh, you need to maintain a proper paper trail, you also want to make sure that you are as granular. So that paper trail must be as granular as possible. So when you write a, your dispute letter, make sure to include the following items. So your name, address, and date of birth. You want to have your social security number. You want to talk about the date of writing the letter. So because when it when it comes to uh, disputing, disputing anything about credit or financial uh, information in general, you have a statute of limitations. So you got to have the, you got to have proper chronology here. So the dates are really critical. You want to talk about the dates of disputed information and the company that provided that information in the first place. So that's, that company is called the data furnisher. So if the, if the company says, you know what, you know, this person owes me uh, this amount on a certain date, you need to make sure the company is, a, is able to prove that. The burden of proof is not, is not on you. The burden of proof is on that company. And you also want to talk about the credit bureau that, re, that recorded the disputed hard inquiry. So if it's all three current bureaus, you have to mention that. If, it, if it's only one, you have to mention that too. You also want to talk about your official request for an inquiry removal, along with reasons why you believe authorities should remove the inquiries in the inquiry in the first place. You need to be granular, okay? And you, you want to add any relevant supporting documents that will help authorities with their investigation. For example, an FTC identity theft report bank statements or evidence from the creditor and what you want to do is you want to make sure to send copies of any supporting documents but not the originals as you won't get them back if you want to make this process easier the ftc provides actually on their website a dispute letter template so that's really really as granular as possible Next thing you want to do is, you know, after gathering all documentation, you need to submit your dispute. And when we talk about the submitting dispute, we are talking about, again, the same level of uh, thoroughness that I just mentioned a little earlier. You got to be granular as, as much as possible. And uh, so we're talking about you raising any questionable inquiries with the same bureau that lists them on your credit report. So what I'm talking, what I'm saying is that if you say, uh, if you see a hard inquiry on your Equifax, but no hard inquiry on Experian or, or a TransUnion, don't send a, a dispute letter to Experian or a TransUnion. No, you want to focus on, you want to you want to keep all your eyes on the ball. So you really want to send only a dispute letter to Equifax. And uh, so it, it's important that keeping track of uh, the documentation you send is a good idea in case of a legal investigation. The thing is that usually when we talk about credit, credit uh, proceedings, they ultimately they may ultimately end up with on the legal side of things and you know if you go to if you go to if you go to a court of law you got to have a, a proper paper trail i think i just said it for you to prevail in a court of law so uh so when we talk about uh submitting your credit dispute online or in writing that's really the best approach because it allows you to keep a proper paper trail Dispute. You can also dispute hard inquiry errors by phone. So uh, if you, if that's what you want, but that's not what we uh, advise you to do. But if you want it, if you want it, it's totally possible. So with Equifax, the number is eight eight six three four nine 
5191. We're going to put those numbers on the on the on the screen so you have a better idea. So with Equifax, you have 886-349-5191. That's what I said before. For Experian, you have a 888-397-3742. And for a TransUnion, you have a 800-916-8800. So, you know, that's really good. And you are able to dispute hard inquiry errors online. So there are, if you go on uh, Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion's website, they have a specific sections where you can dispute your hard inquiry errors online. And you can also send a dispute letter to uh, like by certified mail. So for, at Equifax, it's Equifax Information Services, LC, PO Box 740256, Atlanta, Georgia, 30374. With Experian, is Experian PO Box 4500, Allen, Texas, 75013. And with TransUnion, it's TransUnion Consumer Solutions, PO Box 2000, Chester, Pennsylvania, 19016. So that's really uh, the, edge, the, the, the contact you need to have. Next, you know, after you've done everything, you have to wait for a verdict. There's nothing else you can do. I mean, you can try it, everything else, but the the ball is, is not on your court in, in your court now. You know the what happens here is that the credit re, no, after you lodged your official dispute, the credit reporting agencies must resolve the matter within 30 to 45 days. That's what I was just telling you a little earlier that the dates play an important role in terms of statute of limitations, and uh, so chronology is critical. And so what will happen here is that. The, the bureau will contact the furniture to determine if the credit check was a mistake. And some, sometimes this could be a mistake, an honest mistake. Sometimes it can be a gross negligence. Sometimes it could be a situation, a situation where you are a victim of identity theft. Okay. And so companies that provide information to credit reporting agencies have a duty to investigate disputes in line with a fair credit reporting at the FCRA. And if the bureau can verify the inquiry, they will likely remove it from your credit report. However, and this is a big however, the bureau may actually reject the claim if the furniture asserts that the hard inquiry is a legitimate credit check. So this is really what it is. And so what do you what should you do here? You want to read. So if for any reason they can't actually uh, remove the hard inquiry from your credit report, you want to request the bureaus to include a statements on your credit file that explains the dispute. And the statement will also be available to any lenders who make hard pulls on your credit report in the future. And usually the, the statement is a 100 word note. It's a pretty straightforward, go straight to the point. Don't try to waste time on, uh, on, on uh, distracting words, whatever. Go straight to the point, explain the situation. And uh, you also have the, uh, the ability to uh, seek further assistance from a nonprofit credit counseling company. So for instance, the NFCC, the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. This is a uh, an organization that helps people resolve credit issues for free and restore their credit scores. So this is pretty good. And so you can consider speaking to an NFCC credit counselor before you approach a credit repair company if, if you were to go that route. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about how to remove hard inquiries from your credit report. And I give you the overview, the approach, the steps, and now the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.